I'll turn to Jacqueline Butler. She is going to, her father was one of the victims of the Spring Hill, or I should say Spring Hill West Rock massacre. January 9th, um, just last week, they celebrated the 49th anniversary. Jacqueline, where is Spring Hill West Rock in relation to say Bally Murphy in Belfast? They're so close together. They're like two parallel streets. So Bally Murphy's one street and the next street on would be Spring Hill West Rock. So they're so close together. Now you were the youngest of six children in 1972. Well, you're still the youngest of six children in 1972. Uh, should set a background. There was a, a ceasefire. There were talks of peace at that time. A Republican delegation had actually been flown to Ireland, uh, led by Sean McStephan, uh, Jerry Adams, Ivor Bell, Seamus Toomey, Dahi O'Connell, and Martin McGinnis were involved. They came back on, that was on January 7th. They came back. There was hope that this would be expanded, that we could have a real solution, real peace. And instead, the ceasefire broke down on July 8th. What happened on July 9th to your father, to the parish priest, to others in the Spring Hill West Rock area that's known as the Spring Hill Massacre? Well, on the 9th of July, um, the ceasefire broke down and there was a gun battle in Lenadoon, which would be about three miles away from Spring Hill West Rock. Um, the IRA had the army pinned down and um, there were heavy gun, it was a heavy gun fight and the army were struggling to get control of Lenadoon. In Spring Hill, well in West Rock, um, a car pulled up and three young men were starting um, chatting. And one of them opened the boot and the other two looked in, were looking into the boot when from an army um, in Corey's timber yard, there was an association post and there was marksmen on that protecting the timber yard and rounds were fired and the three young fellas were shot. Okay, you say a marksman, you're saying British Army marksman, is that correct? It's, it was, yes, Army marksman. Okay, and then how did your father and the local priest get involved or respond to these three young people being shot? Well, my father done a lot with the chapel and Father Fitzpatrick was a new priest to the, the neighborhood and um, he, was, he knew my daddy. So he knocked on our door and asked me, my daddy for help. To, um, he didn't know a way to get to the injured and could my daddy show him a safe route. To right, get what happened when they arrived? Well, the priest had a white hanky and went out waving the white hanky and shot strung out. And my daddy went to Paul Fuller, no, Fitzpatrick back in and the two of them were shot dead. Okay. Um, there were five people all together. Three teenagers were also killed. How, how did that happen? David McCaffrey. John Dougal was one of the young fellas starting by the car that um, my father and father in law were trying to get to help. And David McCaffrey tried to get um, to the Father Fitzpatrick on my daddy's body to pull them back in and he was shot dead. And young Margaret Gargan was 13, a 13 year old school girl. And she was with her two friends. And they run, when they heard the shots, they run for cover and Margaret was shot, um, shot dead as well. All right, now why, what reason did the British government give for saying that these shootings were all justified? What did they say about your father, the priest holding the handkerchief, the three teenagers who were killed? They, in, the, in a local newspaper, the Belfast Telegraph, they were named as five gun men, all dressed in black, that were shot dead because they had attacked um, the army. All right. And in addition, after that, this wasn't the end of it. Your father was taken away, six children. Uh, the British government or British troops, when they came in after that, you, they put your family through an ordeal because of this incident. What happened to your family afterwards? Yes, because my, my daddy was 
shot dead and it was said that he was a gunman. We were terrorized for years up into the eighties and two, three o'clock in the morning when a new regiment came in. Um, we were knocked out of our beds, made to sit on the settee. The house was ransacked. My mother was questioned. My father and um, Father Pat Patrick's memory card was spit on by British soldiers. Um, that some some weeks it was five nights in a row. Some was one night, but three, four o'clock in the morning, I was we were lifted from our bed. I was twenty months old old when my daddy died and my mommy was left widowed with six young children and had no time to grieve because we she was terrorized. Right, now you and the people of Spring Hill West Rock, all of the families, the neighbors, everybody have been fighting just for an inquest, the same thing that they got in Bally Murphy, just to tell the truth, remove the cloud that your father and the priest, teenagers were gunmen, to show the truth of what happened. What stage is that at? And what would it mean if for now, if it was declared under British law that you no longer had the right to that inquest that, that you've been waiting for? Well, we were lucky enough two weeks ago to hear that my daddy's inquest would be next year. But then this week we found out that Boris Johnson is trying to move this forward so none of us get um, get a, an inquest and get the truth out there and finally clear my father's name that he wasn't a gunman. He was a good, hard-working family man just helping, trying to help somebody that was hurt and injured. And he was a good man. He wasn't a gunman and that's all we want. And what would you and the people of Spring Hill Rest Rock, you've had a long campaign, you're waiting for that inquest. What would you like Irish America, what would you like the politicians, the Irish government, all the representatives that are here to do uh, it, to help you? We just want the pressure kept on and to make sure that Boris Johnson doesn't get away with us. He's trying to cover up all his, all the army's wrongdoings instead of just holding his hands up, accepting what happened and uh, apologizing to people. And it's just not our campaign. There is hundreds of families just wanting the truth. That's all people want. We just want the truth and our loved ones' names cleared. And for the British government to say, sorry, sorry, what we did was wrong. We accept it was wrong. And that's what we want. We want justice for our family. All right. Thank you, Jacqueline, uh, for coming on with us.